Hello all, this is a game between a poor fellow named Philippe Eveline, who gets manhandled by the much higher rated David Bruce. David Bruce is an international master who is also involved with the popular chess site chess.com. If you don't know it, I advise you to check it out once, it has uh, great free futures. Well, let's start with the game. e4, e5, f4, king's gambit, he takes f4, press, Bruce accepts, knight f3, and h6. The idea be behind h6 is to play a later g7, g5, uh, holding on to the f pawn, holding on to the extra pawn, and setting up a nice uh, pawn chain. I plays d4, uh, principal move, white has uh, key control over the center of squares, thanks to the e4 and d4 pawns here. g5, bishop c4, d6, and now we have g3. Now g3 still has book opening, so it must be somehow playable, however I personally really don't like it. The reason is because it opens the king side, and the white king is not going anywhere except the king side for the uh, next couple of moves. Uh, the idea about King's Gambit is that uh, White gives off the pawn and uh, gets some initiative and gets some control over the F file. I think uh, in the current position it's a bit far from that. Black decides to develop uh, the knight to c6. White castles into the open position. Bishop g7. Uh, g7 is a very logical place for the black bishop to go because of the cur current pawn structure with pawns on a uh, h6, g5, f4 and on d7 there really is not a better place for the bishop to go so since white already knows that the black bishop is going to go to g7 why not play it immediately and uh, not, not reveal your other plans white plays c3 this is meant to uh, block the black bishop and lessen its strength um, well, it, it, it usually is a good idea to uh, play this move. In the current position, I think uh, White has some problems because of the open king and because of uh, Black being uh, ahead in development. Because now Black develops the bishop with the tempo, it hits the, the rook on f1. White plays rook to f2. And now knight to f6, hitting the e4 pawn and once again developing with tempo. White decides to play the bishop again and to defend the e4 pawn. Now black cannot only take the bishop and gain the bishop pair, black can also just continue developing and uh, give a really huge pressure here. The main ideas of what white had by the king's gambit are not pliable anymore and I think that uh, well, black is really winning already here. Uh, we see that uh, white has to, to mind his king side it is under a potential pawn storm. Um, Black is developed much better. He used every move to develop if he could. Uh, Black is up a pawn, and uh, White simply has no compensation for that. Not at all. So I think it's already lost here. David decides to take it easy and develop the queen to d7. White takes and opens his king even more. Well, what else should he do? And Bruce is not greedy here and decides to cancel to safety and to potentially bring in another rook to the attack, perhaps on e8, perhaps on g8. So black is uh, is doing great here. Knight to a3, peculiar move here. I thought about this move for a while and uh, to be honest I don't see the purpose. I think it's meant to develop but other than that uh, there must be an un underlining idea but or I don't see it or it was not a very good idea on the both. Um, after knight a3 David plays knight to e7. Now another line that also doesn't work and illustrates the weakness of white's king position is uh, f takes c5 here then it follows queen to g4 check King h1, h takes c5, 
Queen g1, trying to trade queens. Knight e takes d5. Knight e takes d5. Knight takes g5. Trading the queens. Black is up. Please up here. Let's see at an alternative because why would white take the pawn instead of the knight? Well, after e takes d5, then we have knight e4 hitting the rook on f2. Queen takes with check. Bishop takes, and now both the f2 rook and the f3 knight are both attacked. So the only place for the white rook to go is f1. And then we have knight to g3 check losing the f1 rook after all. But this of course didn't happen. And after knight c4, black trades and opens a, a file potential for the rooks. Queen z4 check. And well, white is in a world of hurt here. Only move, king h1. Only sensible move. Rook to c2 was also possible, but that would lead to knight e1. Knight to e4. Ouch. Rook to c2. Still not giving up. Black takes the pawn. Well, there there is not a way out here for white. Queen to d3. It hits the knight. Rook h to g8, adding even more pressure to the vulnerable white king, sacrificing the knight on e4, but it doesn't matter anymore. Queen takes, and now we have a beautiful move. Try if you can find it. I continue in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here, Bruce played the very beautiful move. Bishop takes d4, threatening to checkmate on g1 for a queen sacrifice. And perhaps that move uh, looks really strange, because uh, the pawn on c3, the queen on e4, and the knight on f3 all can take the bishop. But well, let's see what happens. First, if you take with the knight, uh, first if you take with the knight, well then of course it's easy because there's no defender of g1. So queen to g1 checkmate. So that's not an option. Another possibility seems to be queen takes d4, but on but then queen takes f3 check, and after the first move rook to g2 we have checkmate on g2 with the capture of the rook, with the capture of the rook. Well, that leaves one possibility. She takes d4, and then we have bishop to g2 check. And after king g1, I'm sure that all can see that bishop takes a 3 check is the end of the game. So, the black knight on d4 is untouchable, and there really is nothing useful that white can do. In the game, white tried to play knight to e3. White succeeded in playing knight to e3, but it didn't help uh, at all. Black simply took the knight. Renewing the threat of checkmates on g1, and there is nothing at all that uh, white can do. Once again, if uh, white decides to uh, take the uh, take the bishop on e3 to get rid of the problem, then we have again bishop to g2 check, king to g1, and once again the same pattern as we had as we had before. So after bishop takes e3, white resigned. One more thing about this game. Is that legend has it that before executing the move, bishop takes d4 here, Bruce actually scratched his nose 12 times before executing the move, proving that consciously or subconsciously he knew that there was a mate in 12 in this position. And what happened that David would see this video at any time? It would be nice to know if that was. Uh, a coincidence that he scratched his nose 12 times, or if that perhaps he even doesn't remember it. So it will be subconscious. Okay, well, thank you for watching. See you another time. Bye bye.